Good morning. Welcome to day one of the three-day challenge. Today we'll be working with standing poses and uh, building up to a little bit of an inversion. All right, so get ready. We won't need much, maybe a couple blankets and a block for the end. And uh, let's just get started. Here we go. Stand in the center of your mat, Tadasana. Bring the inner edges of the feet together, inner heels together. Press into the heel, lengthen the front of the foot, so stretching the toes forward. So you can feel the whole sole of the foot lengthening. Press into the front of the foot, extend the heel. So you're on that firm foundation of the inner and outer edges of the feet. And then lift up through the arch, lift up through the inner legs, lift up so that you can feel that movement from the grounding of the feet all the way up through the crown of the head. Release your arms down, release your shoulders down. And then inhale, lift the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bring the arms down. Inhale again, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bring your arms out to the side. Rotate the shoulders, rotate the whole arm, palm facing up. Urdhva Hastasana again, reaching up. Exhale. Bring your arms down, Tadasana. Inhale, lift the arms up, rotate the arms and the shoulders, palms facing up. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Inhale, breathe, lift up through the chest. Bring the upper back into the body, lifting up, look between the hands. And then bring the head back, bring the arms down. And now bring your right arm up, Urdhva Bada Guliyanasana. So take the elbow back, take the other hand, and walk it up the back. Catch the fingers. If you can't catch the fingers, just press the hand into the back. Inhale, lift up. Roll the left shoulder back. Draw the right elbow up. Breathe. Stay in Tadasana. Thighs are moving back. Stay centered on the foot. Lift up through the arches, through the inner heel. And then release. Bring both arms out to the side. Urdhva Hastasana again. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bring the arms down. Other side, lift up. You can take that hand, bring the elbow back. Rotate the outer shoulder, outer arm. Walk the fingers down. Take the other arm to the side. And bend the elbow, walk the hand up. Once you catch the fingers or you've positioned the hand right in the center of the spine, Press, draw the spine in, absorb the spine into the body, and then roll that right shoulder back. Lift up. Breathe. And then release. Bring both arms up. Interlace the fingers, Parvatanasana. Press up. Connect with the feet. So keep the feet grounded, getting that extension right up through the legs, right up through the, the whole body, and up through the arms. And then bring the hands down. Now take your hands out to the side again, rotate the shoulders, bring your arms up. Urdhva Hastasana, or sorry, Urdhva Namaskar. So bringing the hands together. You can try that a couple times, bring the hands together. If you're tight in the shoulders, just continue with Urdhva Hastasana. Bring the hands together. You can hook the thumbs, stretch up through the fingers, drop the shoulders, and get that turn of the outer arm and the inner arm as you lift up. And now, curving the upper back, I want you to look up. Lift the back of the head so that you're extending the neck. Keep the thighs moving back, tailbone and middle buttocks moving forward. Bring your head back, bring your arms down. And now take the hands behind you in Pashina Namaskar. So you'll take the hands, turn the hand, catch the little finger side of the hand so you even out the pinky and then the ring finger, the middle finger, index finger. And roll the shoulders back. So once you have connection with the hands, press into each finger, 
into the root of each finger, into the heel of the hand. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, roll the shoulders back. Move the elbows back. And just be there in your Tadasana. So thighs moving back, tailbone forward, lift up through the chest. And then release. Swing your arms up again. And then come back to Tadasana. Take a few breaths there. So establish that connection with the feet, with the legs, lifting up. And now we'll go into Vrikshasana. So this is that external rotation. The right thigh, bring your foot up and bring the foot to the inner side of that thigh. If you need a wall, you can come closer to the wall. Hold your, put your hand at the wall. So as you press the foot into that inner thigh, press the outer thigh into the foot. Take your hands out just to have balance there, feeling that those little micro movements on your foot. Press down, lift up through the leg. Rotate the arms, the shoulders. Inhale, reach up. Tailbone in, right buttock forward, and then exhale. Coming down, come back to Tadasana. Inner edges of the feet together. Standing back to recover your breath, recover your balance, and recover that feeling of being connected to the earth and lifting up. Inhale, come up, other leg. Bring the foot up as high as you can to the inner thigh. Hands on your hips to begin with, toes moving down toward the floor. Left buttock moving forward. Arms out, rotate the shoulders. Tops of the shoulders moving down, inner arms lifting up. Inhale, breathe. And now take the hands together in Namaskar. Reach up. Stay connected with the foot and the inner thigh, the outer thigh and the foot. And looking up. And then coming down. Stand back in Tadasana, taking a few breaths there. So just recovering that breath, recovering your balance, looking at a place in front of you just to quiet the mind. Inhale, we'll bring your arms up and we'll jump out. Uttita Hasta Parasana. We'll do that a couple times. Bending the knees, jump forward or back to Tadasana. Inhale, exhale, jump the feet. So you want the feet parallel to the sides of the mat when the feet are jumped out. Okay, and then bend the knees, jump the feet in. If you have any difficulties with the knees, then just walk the feet apart. Okay, we'll do it again. Inhale, exhale. Bend the knees, jump the feet. Now take your right heel, move your right heel away. Externally rotate that left leg. Uttita Trikonasana. So we just go forward, touch down, inhale, come up. Exhale, lengthen over the front foot, touch down. Doing that a few times. Just getting some warmth through that hip. Keep the back leg firm, back leg connected into that heel on the floor. And continuing lengthening. So now we'll stay. You can take your hand on your shin, press down and lift up. So you want to continue to get some length through that lower side. Press and turn and look up at your hand. If your neck is stiff, you have tightness in your shoulders, just look forward. Breathe, inhale, come up, turn your feet. You can bring your hands onto your hips. Take a few breaths there. Now again, press that left heel out, externally rotate the right leg. Parshvahasta, Parasna. So the heel is lined up with the back arch. Feet are grounded on the on the earth, connecting with the earth. Exhale, coming forward and back. 
coming forward and back. I have the wall here, I can touch into the wall. So I feel like I'm getting that length through the side trunk. Forward, and then finally bring your hand onto your shin. Reorganize through the legs. Make sure you're pressing into that back heel from the front foot, drawing up, turn the chest, and then bring the arm up. Breathe, take a few breaths here. Keep the inner back thigh lifted. Feel the weight on the back foot. Keep that back leg straight. And then inhale, come up. Turn the feet. Walk or jump the feet together. Tadasana. Inhale, jump the feet again. Turn that back heel, coming into Virabhadrasana 2. So keep the weight in the back leg. Come down so that the trunk is moving between the two legs. So this front leg is a break so that that thigh is not moving beyond the ankle. And then turn and look over your front fingers. Take a few breaths there. Let that hip sink down. Inhale, come up. Turn your feet. Turn that back heel. So getting that rotation in the top of the thigh that you had in Vrikshasana. So <coughs> lengthening. Drawing back through the outer knee to the hip. Making sure you have enough distance. So you can always adjust by moving the back leg back a little bit further. And then dropping your shoulders, look over the front hand. Take a few breaths there. Inhale, come up. Turn your feet. Jump your feet together. Okay, we're gonna do both of those together. Inhale, exhale, wide stride, turn that back heel. Externally rotate the front leg. Exhale, lengthen into Uttita Trikonasana. Have the hand pressing down. If you need a block, you can take a block, but here you don't really need a block if you use your own body. Press into the back heel, turn the chest. Take a few breaths. And then lift the bottom arm up, bend the front knee, come into Virabhadrasana 2. Coming back into Uttita Trikonasana, straightening the front leg, pressing down, turn the chest. Inhale, come up. Bring your hands onto your hips. Turn to do the other side. So moving that heel back, externally rotate the front leg. Uttita Trikonasana. Wide arms, press down into the bottom hand, lift up through the top arm. Turn, look up at your hand, breathe. And now, bending the front knee, keep the trunk moving straight down between the two legs. Look over the front hand. Soft breath. Drop your hip. Keep the back leg extended. Inhale, come up. Turn the feet. And jump the feet together. So come back to Tadasana and just come back to your breath. So feel that breath, the deepening of the breath through the lungs. Feeling the sensations in the body. Feeling the heartbeat. All right, so we're gonna turn. Take your feet a little bit wider. You bring your arms up holding onto your elbows. Bring your arms down, bring your head down. Inhale, come up, stretch your arms up, lengthen out. Release down, inhale, come up. Uttanasana, feet hips width apart. Walk your hands back or take your hands on your calves. Release your head. Inhale, come up and then come back to Tadasana. You're gonna come down onto your mat, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So to get your distance, your measurements, come first into forward Virasana. It's an approximate, but you want your hips moving back, extend your arms forward, and then come onto the hands, turn the toes under. Inhale, lift up, 
Exhale, lengthen from the hands, from the palms, and the fingers descending. Lift up through the side trunk. Come right onto the toes, the mounds of the toes. Lift up, and then exhale, roll over the toes. Descend the heels. Take a few breaths there. And now inhale, walk or jump forward to Uttanasana toward the front of your mat. Look up, release your head down. Inhale, come up, swing the arms up. Namaste, Tadasana. Inhale, we'll do that again. Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, coming forward, Uttanasana. Look up, walk or jump your feet back to downward dog. Connecting the hands, connecting the legs, lift up through the side trunk. Take a few breaths, inhale, jump forward, Uttanasana, or walk forward, look up, Take your hands back or hands on your shins if you don't reach the floor. Release the head down. Inhale, look up. Hands on the shins or the floor. Urdhva Hastasana. And Namaste. Tadasana. Okay. So now we are going to do a preparation for uh, Shirshasana. So inversions are, are really good to incorporate in your day. I haven't spent so much time on them because it's really important that you know what you're doing and your body is um, able and capable of lifting up. So today we're going to do Arda Shirshasana. When you're going into Shirshasana, you're interlacing the fingers. You're on the baby finger side of the hand and the wrist. Forearms are pressing down. So we're just, we're not going to go up into the full pose, but we're going to use that foundation to learn how to lift. Okay, so you're coming down. Crown of the head will be right on the floor. So how do you find the crown of the head? So you're coming from here. I'm assuming most of you know how to go into Shirshasana already. I have some separate videos on that, but just watching from the ears, bring your fingers up. From your front hand, bring your finger back. So you find the crown of the head. Think of uh, your soft spot when you were a baby. Or if you've seen children <laughs> and soft spots, you know where that is. But find it on your own. Find out where that place is. Keep your outer wrist down, your forearms down. And then come up into that downward dog that you just had. So first stabilize, press down from the outer elbows, press the forearm down, press the wrist down, and lift up. You can walk in a little bit. So when you walk in, you're not walking in with a rounded back. Keep the back <coughs> so that it's resisting away from the wall. And then bring the feet together, left foot on the floor, raise your right leg up. So bring that firmness that you had in your standing poses and reach the leg up. Press up through the ball of the foot. Breathe. And then come down. Reorganize. So you still want to be connected to the arms, lifting up through the outer arms, shoulders, outer arms moving towards one another. So you lift the shoulder girdle. So it's called headstand, but you have to be really strong in your arms and your shoulders. All right, pressing into that other foot, lift up. You can come onto the toes, lift the toes of the top leg. Breathe. And then release. And then come into forward Virasana. Just let your head rest on the floor. Bring your hands back, child's pose. Take a few breaths there. And then come up. And now we'll go into Sarvangasana. So for those of you that have been practicing shoulder stand, 
You can have your blankets there. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Those of you that haven't been practicing, you can go a little bit closer to the wall. Have some setup. It's okay if you're just on your head and your shoulders. We're not going to stay too long. But those of you that have the setup for shoulder stand, you're going to bring your shoulders onto the onto the blankets near the edge, and then bring your feet up onto the wall. Press your arms down. At this point, if you have a strap, you can bring the strap right onto the onto the elbows, or you can take your mat back as well and use that traction of the mat. So you keep your arms down, you keep your shoulders down, and then lift up, take your hands behind your back. So you're walking the hands down. For those of you who've been practicing, you can come all the way up, extend the legs. For those of you that haven't, keep one leg at the wall, and extend up. So the idea is you want to be on the shoulders, the outer shoulders, so that work that we did with the rolling the shoulders, rolling the arm, you want to do that here. Walk your hands down. It's more difficult to talk when you're upside down. Lift the, lift the legs, tailbone in. Now you're pressing the elbows down, the forearms down, and you're lifting. Walk your hands down your back. Extend the legs up. Keep the shoulders moving down toward the blankets or the floor. Take a few breaths. We're going to go into Halasana now. So <clears throat> for those of you that aren't ready to go into Halasana, if you already know, you want to take a chair or a bolster behind you, or just bring your legs back to the wall and then come down. So in Halasana, walk your feet away, lift your hips up, keep your hands on your back to help you keep that lift, and just allow the breath to be relaxed and soft. As we won't stay long, you can do more practice for your inversions later in the day, but I just wanted to introduce it because it's really nice to start out with inversions as well as end the day. Okay, take your hands away and slide your shoulders and your head onto the floor. And then bring your feet together, knees out to the side, Baddha Konasana. Relax your arms, palms facing upward, pressing the feet together, like you did in Namaskar, when the hands were pressing together behind your back and over your head. Press the feet together, which is the same action that you had in Vrikshasana. Tree pose. And then bring your feet together and roll onto your side. And then you can extend the mat out and come into um, Shavasana. You can use one of your blankets. You can bring that behind the head just for a little bit of extra cushioning, but especially if your shoulders are tight and your chin is moving back, you can use that blanket first to be available in case you need it. <clears throat> so you'll roll the shoulders, that same turning of the top of the shoulders, turning the arms, shoulder blades are flat, and then you're right on <clears throat> the back of the head. <clears throat> if this adjustment hasn't helped with the neck lifting, then the blanket is, is good because it lifts the chin 
or it moves the chin down and softens your throat. All right, so in Shavasana now, just allow yourself to relax completely from the sensation of the back body touching the ground and just observe where you can adjust a little bit more so you feel symmetrical using the sensations of the heels, the calves, the hips, the back, where you're placed on your shoulder blades and your arms to inform you of how the body is, is positioned and is there any adjustment you can make to be able to relax the nervous system. So in Shavasana, you're not thinking about that. Some things you'll be able to adjust and some things you'll have to just work with over your practice and over time. You can develop that inner awareness and sensitivity to be able to release. Relax your breath. So just letting go from the sensations, letting go of the body. Feeling the inhalation and the exhalation. Letting go completely. Let your exhalation release further and further. As this is a shorter practice, we'll begin to come out of Shavasana now, deepening your breath. You can bring your hands onto your abdomen and your chest. Coming back into your physical body. Be aware of the breath, the depth of the breath. Be aware of your mental state, feeling that quietness, that calmness. Now bend your knees. Rolling onto your right side. Just be there for a few breaths. And when you're ready, you can come up, press yourself up. And then sit back in a cross leg position. Bring your hands on your knees. Take a few more deep breaths. Lengthened inhalation, lengthened exhalation. Namaste. So we will now prepare for our day, whatever you're going to do. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow for day two of the challenge. Take care.